To lock your Range Rover, remove the key from the ignition and ensure that all doors, hood, and tailgate are closed. Press the lock button on the remote handset once to lock the doors, hood, and tailgate and to activate the alarm. The turn signals will flash once to confirm activation. Press the unlock button once to disarm the alarm and unlock the driver's door. Press the unlock button a second time to unlock the rest of the doors. The master locking button is a safety feature located on the front console. It allows all doors to be locked or unlocked from inside the vehicle, whether the vehicle is moving or stationary. To personalize your driver settings, turn the key to position 2. Adjust the seat, side mirrors, and steering wheel. Press the memory button and within 7 seconds press the desired preset button. The ignition must be on to adjust the mirrors. The mirror adjustment controls are located on the driver's door. Move the lower control switch to select the left or right hand mirror. Push the appropriate arrow on the mirror adjustment control to adjust the height and angle of the mirror. When reverse is selected, the passenger door mirror dips, giving you a clear view of the area behind the vehicle. Remember, the power mirror switch must be in the driver's position for this feature to function. The door mirrors can be folded in to allow passage through narrow openings. Press the mirror fold button once to fold the mirrors in. Press again to return the mirrors to the driving position. The radio may be accessed by selecting audio video from the main menu or pressing mode and turning the knob until radio is highlighted. Rotate the power knob to adjust volume or use the plus and minus switch on the steering wheel. Press bend to select AM, AMA, FM or FMA. Press the up or down seek buttons to skip to the next station or use the seek function on the touch screen. This will also allow you to scan available stations. To automatically store the nine strongest local radio stations, press the tuning icon, then press auto store. To manually select a station, select the FM tuning icon. Press the up or down keys to tune or press direct frequency input and enter a frequency. Once the frequency is set, press and hold the desired location to create a preset. To play a CD, press Mode, then turn until CD is highlighted. If another audio source is in use, press CD. Press the icon of the disc you would like to play. Skip tracks using the Seek buttons. Press and hold the seek buttons to fast forward or reverse through a track. Track controls are also located on the steering wheel. The pause control is located here. Press CD settings to access, random, repeat, and scan CD features. Note that these features may only apply to a single disc, not all CDs at once. Touch the selected icon to play, and again to cancel the feature. Range Rover's climate control system is easy to use. For fully automatic control, use the auto mode by pressing auto and then set the driver's and passenger's temperature controls. The electronics will automatically adjust air distribution and fan speed to achieve and maintain the temperature selected. For quick cooling, turn both temperature control knobs toward the blue dots. To quickly warm up the interior, turn both temperature knobs toward the red dots. To manually adjust heating and cooling, set the temperature and adjust fan speed by rotating this knob. Then select the vents by pressing the distribution buttons. 
the air temperature from the face and upper level vents may be fine-tuned by turning the thumb wheel left for warmer and right for cooler. Rear seat passengers can adjust the temperature from the air vents with a left knob. Use the right knob to adjust the fan speed. To activate or prevent operation of the rear climate controls, press the isolation switch located in the center console. For vehicles fitted with front climatic seats, the program is activated by rotating the knob. Turn to the right for heating, turn to the left for cooling. Select the seat back or seat back and cushion by pressing the center button. For vehicles fitted with heated seats only, the center button activates the heated seat setting. Press once for high, which is indicated when both lights are illuminated. Press a second time to set to low. Press a third time to turn off the heater. All Range Rovers are equipped with rear seat heater controls, which are located on the back of the center console. Your Range Rover is equipped with one-touch window operation. Press the window switch firmly and release. The window will open fully or close fully with a single touch. To stop the window, just press the switch again. The fuel filler door is on the passenger side of the vehicle. An arrow on the fuel gauge serves as a helpful reminder. With the vehicle fully unlocked, press the right side of the fuel door to access the gas cap. Range Rover's electric sunroof has both tilt and slide capabilities. The sunroof switch is located with the overhead controls. To tilt the roof, press the center of the switch once. To slide the roof open, press the switch rearward to the first position. The sunroof slides open until the switch is released. To fully open the roof, press the switch rearward to the second position and release. To close the roof from either the tilted or fully open position, press the switch forward to the first position. The roof closes until the switch is released. To fully close the roof in one operation, press the switch forward to the second position and release. The headlight controls are to the left of the steering wheel. The headlight knob has four positions. In position one, all lights are off. Turn to position 2 to turn on the parking lights and side markers. Position 3 adds the headlights. With the knob in position 4 and the ignition switch in the second position, the side lights, low beam headlights and license plate light will automatically illuminate when the ambient light falls below a predefined level. Your front and rear windshield wiper controls are located on the steering column's right-hand stock. Push the stock up once to activate the intermittent wipers or the rain sensor. The wiping interval is controlled by the delay switch. Push the stock up again for normal speed and once more for fast speed. Push the stock down and release for a single wipe. To wash the windshield, pull the stock toward you and hold, or push the button on the end of the stock. If the headlights are on, the windshield washer will also power wash the headlights. Push the stock forward to activate the rear window wiper's intermittent mode. Push forward again and hold to activate the rear washer and wiper. Range Rover's speed-dependent windshield wiper mode is operable when the wiper stock is in position 1 for intermittent mode. As the speed of the vehicle increases, the wiper frequency increases accordingly to help maintain optimum visibility. Your Range Rover is fitted with a rain sensor that will automatically turn the windshield wipers on and adjust wiper speed according to how hard it is raining. To activate the rain sensor mode, simply place the wiper stock in position 1. The rain sensor sensitivity can be adjusted by rotating the intermittent delay switch forward or backward. If the sensor detects constant rain, the wipers will operate continuously. 
The Range Rover is equipped with an electronic parking brake located on the front console behind the terrain response knob. To operate, be sure the vehicle is stopped. Pull the lever up and release. A red park light will illuminate in the instrument panel. The parking brake can be released in two ways. If the vehicle is stationary, just press the accelerator and the parking brake will automatically release. This is particularly useful when parked on a hill. It also prevents you from driving with the parking brake on. To manually release the brake, make sure the ignition is on and step on the brake and press down on the parking brake lever. The electronic parking brake can also be used as an emergency brake by pulling and holding the lever to reduce speed. You will hear the ABS activating depending upon conditions. Releasing or depressing the lever will cancel the parking brake. Remember, this technique should only be used to decelerate or stop in an emergency. The air suspension system controls vehicle height by managing the quantity of air in the air springs. In most situations, height changes may only be made when the engine is running and all doors are closed. When the air suspension raises the vehicle, it uses compressed air stored in its reservoir. The vehicle will rise slowly if this reservoir is depleted due to repeated raising and lowering of the vehicle in a short period of time. The Range Rover's electronic air suspension has four settings. On-road, off-road, access, and crawl. They are accessed by the suspension height control switches. Push the up and down arrows to move through the suspension heights. These symbols indicate whether you are in off-road, on-road, access, or crawl mode. A suspension height symbol also appears on the 4x4 information screen. One of two arrows will be lit to show when the vehicle is rising or lowering and will extinguish once the height change is completed. If a height change is requested that is not allowed, such as trying to raise the vehicle with the engine turned off, the arrows will flash twice, a chime will sound, and a message will be displayed in the message center. On-road is the normal height for the vehicle. Off-road height is about two inches higher, providing improved ground clearance. Access height is about two inches lower than on-road height. It enables easier entry, exit, and loading of the vehicle. Crawl locks the vehicle at access height. This is helpful in low clearance situations, such as parking garages. Crawl can be selected when the vehicle's speed is kept below 22 miles per hour. To open the tailgate, ensure that all doors are unlocked. There are two ways to unlatch the upper tailgate. Press the button on the center console or the one on the underside of the bottom edge. Lift to open. Then press the release switch on the top of the lower tailgate door and lower. Range Rover's split rear seat can be partially or fully folded to increase the rear cargo space. First, ensure that the headrests are fully lowered and the armrest is stowed. Press the seat back release lever and fold the seat back down. To fold the entire seat assembly forward, lift the rear of the seat base up. This stows the seat in a vertical position and increases the cargo area further. To return the seats to the normal position, pull the yellow release lever and push the seat base back onto the floor. The seat base should latch securely. Then raise the seat back. No red should be visible when the seat back is correctly latched. Your Range Rover is equipped with a highly advanced six-speed command shift transmission with three operating modes, automatic, sport, and manual. In automatic, gears are selected automatically. The gear is indicated on the gear shift selector panel and in the message center. To select sport mode, move the gear selector to the left. In sport mode, the transmission remains fully automatic. Mid-range performance is improved by holding lower gears longer. Downshifting is more aggressive. 
To manually select gears with Command Shift, you must be in Sport Mode. Moving the gear selector up shifts the transmission to a higher gear. Moving the selector back changes to a lower gear. The selected gear is shown in the message center. Moving the selector to the right resumes automatic operation. The cruise control settings are on the left side of the steering wheel. To set the speed, press the master cruise switch. Accelerate to at least 20 miles per hour. Press the plus switch to set the cruise speed. The cruise control indicator will illuminate. To increase or decrease the set speed, press and hold the plus or minus switch and release when the desired speed is reached. You can also tap the switches. To suspend cruise control, press the master switch or step on the brake pedal. Press the resume switch to return to the previously set speed. To turn off cruise control, press and hold the master switch until the indicator in the instrument panel goes out. Park distance control assists the driver when parking or locating obstacles nearby. Four sensors on the front bumper and two on the corners of the rear bumper have a range of about two feet. Two additional sensors on the center rear have an extended range of about five feet. The distance from an object is signaled by an intermittent tone, a high pitch for the front, a low one for the rear. As the vehicle moves closer to the object, the frequency increases. When the distance is less than one foot, the tone becomes steady. Park distance control is automatically activated whenever reverse is engaged. It can be turned off manually by pressing the park distance control button. Hill Descent Control, or HDC, is a function of the anti-lock braking system. Available at speeds below 30 miles an hour, it provides automatic braking in low traction situations. HDC should be used in conjunction with an appropriate gear selection. Check your owner's manual for more information. During a descent, HDC automatically operates the brakes to slow the vehicle and maintain a preset target speed of about 2 miles per hour. The target speed can be changed by tapping the steering wheel mounted cruise controls plus and minus switches. With HDC activated, ABS and traction control are still fully functional. When the brake pedal is used, HDC is overridden. When the pedal is released, HDC will resume. Land Rover's Terrain Response System is designed to enhance both on- and off-road performance by the simple twist of a knob located just behind the shifter. The knob can be rotated to one of five Terrain Response programs. General for normal conditions, grass, gravel, snow, which also includes ice, mud and ruts, Sand, and rock crawl. The driver's choice of program enables terrain response to automatically optimize these systems. Electronic traction control, hill descent control, electronic locking differentials, electronic air suspension, throttle input, and gear selection. Terrain response is always active. If you are unsure of which special program to select, remain in general program until a choice can be made with greater confidence. Details on the use of the terrain response system can be found in your owner's manual.